friends of the advanced guitar playing, we just heard the ukulele street dance, one of my simple beginner's pieces, which shows what the Baroque guitar was made for, for strumming and for rhythmic, for accompanying. You can also play lines on it, you can play counterpoints, but it's really not made for that. I will now show you what you can do with this instrument and play my own arrangements and improvisations on five pieces of Gaspar Sanz, which are folk tunes that are made for dance. And so the musician had to improvise on the grounds and they are presented on a very cool spot on the so-called Fairy Tail Lake close to Tübingen and I hope you enjoy.
Okay, here we're back. You saw and heard that we had some fun. But let's first talk about the Heartland Sellers guitars. They are mass manufactured instruments, but they are okay. So you can play on them, they sound good, they look good. And if you would order an instrument with a good luther, you had to pay 10 times the amount that they cost. There are four different versions, different woods, and they cost around 700 euro or 750 dollars. It depends on where you buy it. The seller's original Luthers lived in Venice, and today there exist instruments from three of them. I will blend in some pictures of different Sellas guitars made by different Luthers. They were brothers or father and sons, whatever. Giorgio, Matteo and Domenico in Venice. When I retired and I had a little accident playing soccer, I was looking for an instrument that was easier to play for the right hand. And so I found this Toman guitar and I had a lot of fun with it. But it is a modernized baroque guitar, so it has six strings. It's very much like usual playing. And I was interested in how the double chorus instruments would sound. I knew double chorus instruments from my 12 string guitar that I used with, with my band Orexis. And I was traveling to Füssens where I found a vihuela by my favorite Luther, Dieter Henze, and I found out that I didn't like it so much. And I came back and I was looking for a Vaubon guitar, this time a six string. It was a copy that was altered so that you could play all the vihuela literature on it. But there were problems with this instrument. And I found this seller's guitar and again I thought, ah, oh, this is not much. But I ordered one and I was surprised. I play it now for two weeks and the instrument increased. It became better. Now let's come to Gaspar Sanz and to the pieces and to the musical things that we can learn from it. Gaspar Sanz was born in 1640 in Calanda, Aragon. He studied in Salamanca theology and philosophy. And after this, he went to Italy where he studied music and he became organ player with King Philip IV. And he played in Rome and studied the guitar music of Corbetta and other Italian guitarists. He had also probably all the time the guitar because it's a very light instrument and you can take it along, you can sit down somewhere in the evening sun and have your fun with this instrument. Yeah, you can climb rocks as you saw before and you can even uh, sit in the water and play it. So when Gaspar Sanz came back from Italy, he published in Saragossa 1674 his Instrucción de Música sobre la Guitarra Española y Metodo de sus Primeros Rudimentos hasta Tangerla con Destreza. Music Instructions for the Spanish Guitar and Method that includes the primary elements necessary to play skillfully. And if you see all these pieces, we see that on the one hand he is a very talented composer and on the other hand he's a very good teacher. He always uses the basic harmonies like tonic, subdominant, dominant, double dominant. He makes very short pieces where he can show how the student can develop his style on doing variations. So if we for example, see La Cavalleria de Napoles, the cavalry of Napoleon with two trumpets. He calls it Dos Clarines. We see that he has only one and a half line and everything is written. 
And so you have to take the elements he gives and put them together in your own puzzle and make the piece longer, because if you play it like this, it's not even a minute. The same we have with Ruggiero e Paradetas. This is like Almont and Courant. The same material in a four meter and then in a three meter. And the Matachin ritual dance, also known in South America, in the Tharabanda is a typical Spanish street dance. We have also more complicated compositions of Gaspar Sanz. His most famous piece is the Canarias. But this talent he has to explain simple things made him very important in Spain. How important he was can be seen in the fact that Joaquin Rodrigo, the famous composer of Concierto de Aranjuez, which was composed not for Andres Segovia, and therefore Andres Segovia never played it. He used music elements that could have been from Gaspar Sanz in Concierto de Aranjuez, because it's so Spanish. When Segovia complained that he didn't dedicate the piece to him, he decided to write another concerto, and it's called the Fantasia para un gentil hombre. Gentil hombre was... Mr. Segovia, and in this fantasia he used exclusively the pieces of Gaspar Sanz. Now let's finish with the famous Concierto de Aranjuez, the beginning, and as you heard Gaspar Sanz, you will see what I mean. was not bad, but it was not good either. But serious, I think this instrument is nice as an encore instrument. That means if you are not really a Baroque professional, this is good enough. It looks nice, it performs nice, and what I'm trying to do, and this will be one of the next films, I will try to transform it to a six-course instrument. Let's see what happens. See you! <laughs>